It's International Fight Weekend. There's nobody that I'd like to speak to more on this week than UFC President Dana White. Such an exciting one is the trilogy fight. Conor McGregor versus Dustin Poirier. I want to go back to the last fight. When you look at Poirier and you look at him having wars with Holloway, Alvarez, Gaethje, how well do you think that equipped him to deal with Conor McGregor and everything that comes with that in the last fight? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's all about experience. And that kid's got it. You know, he, he picked himself up, dusted himself off after the first fight with McGregor, uh, learned from his mistakes, and has become what he is today. If you look at Conor's legacy right now, I think that a lot of people would say he's the guy that transcended MMA and became a huge mainstream star, one of the richest athletes in the sport, two-division champion. How much further can he improve his legacy, and what would he have to do, in your opinion, to do that? Saturday night, he would win, win the trilogy uh, with Dustin Poirier, and that will put him in title contention. He would fight for the title again. So if he does fight for the title and, say, hypothetically wins it and becomes a two-division champion, uh, sorry, a two-time lightweight champion, rather, do you think he needs to defend the title in order to improve his, his fight legacy? No, but, you know, there's, there's two things that, that McGregor loves. He loves to compete, loves to win, and uh, he loves money. So, you know, he wins on Saturday night, puts him in title contention. You know, that fight will be massive, and then every defense after that would be huge. So... Um, the, the amount of money that this kid can make is unlimited. You mentioned recently the winner of this fight is likely in line for a lightweight championship fight against Charles Oliveira, who will be at the fight this Saturday. Do you hope that that fight happens this year, if, if all goes according to plan? Yeah, yeah. I'd like to see it happen this year. When would you target that? I mean, I, know, I don't know if Madison Square Garden is open, but uh, is November at MSG a possibility? Yeah, no, no, November at MSG is very possible. Um, or, or it could be at the end of the year. I, I don't know yet. Uh, we got to see what happens on Saturday. You know, and whoever wins, how does he come out of this fight? Is that kind of the plan? Is November and December same as, as usual New York and Vegas, the two really big events to kind of end off the year? Yeah, and it's, it, you know, it, it's going to depend on, on what else opens up in this country and, um, you know, where we're able to go. Have you been talking to different states? From your understanding, which states are open to full capacity now that you guys are exploring? Yeah, so we, we got a guy that, that, that deals with nothing but that. And, uh, you know, yeah, he, he's out there following up with, uh, with um, you know, all these different states to see who's open. And if they are, are they available? You know, because a lot of concerts are trying to go on right now. And, you know, a lot of people are backed up and, and looking to put on events. Look at the co-main event with... Gilbert Burns, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. Wonderboy is one of the few people in the welterweight division that has not yet fought Usman, but he's 38. He's fought twice for the title before. How much pressure is there on Wonderboy to win this fight? Could this be his last chance to get back into title contention? I think there's a ton of pressure on both guys. You know, I, I, obviously Gilbert Burns wants to get back and get another title shot too. And, and, and again, that's what makes this fight so fun. There's so much at stake, you know. Um, and, and is Wonder Boy going to stay on the outside and pick Gilbert Burns apart? Can Gilbert Burns get in and, and trade with him? And can he catch Wonder Boy? You know, he's so mobile. And if he does catch him, can he take him down? Wonder Boy has great takedown defense. It's a very uh, stylistically a fun fight, and there's a lot at stake. Greg Hardy debuted about two and a half years ago. This is his ninth UFC fight. A lot of hoopla around him when you guys signed him and, and started having him on the roster. Now he seems like just another heavyweight. Did you expect him to be a little bit further ahead in his progression at this point in time? How do you evaluate no. his talent? No, I did not. You know, th this guy's coming in. He played football his whole life. Came in at an older age and started training MMA. And, and I talked to Jerry Jones when, when, we, when we signed him. And he told me, man, he said, he's one of the toughest, meanest dudes I've ever had on the team. And, and he was right for, for, for him to still be here. I think, I, I think people are, are, are overlooking um, what, what this guy has accomplished, that he's still here in the UFC. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I think with his athleticism, with that alone in the heavyweight division, I think he's got a leg up on a lot of different people. So how do you evaluate him at this point in time? Where, where do you think he's at in his career? Uh, this, well, this is a big one. Obviously, he's you know he's going in against Tai Tuivasa, which is a uh, which is a very tough fight for anybody, um, and and this 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 is a real big test for him. So, and and I expect Tai Tuivasa comes out 
from bell to bell and tries to take your head off. So I, I think this fight's going to be a, a war, and uh, this is going to show us where he's at. You mentioned there are going to be a ton of celebrities in attendance for this weekend's card. Give me some names. Who's, who's on the guest list? Um, everybody from uh, Justin Bieber, Machine Gun Kelly, uh, Trump. Uh, we got uh, Mel Gibson. Huh? Kardashians. Car yeah, Kardashians uh, coming with uh, Travis Barker. You got uh, Megan Fox, Kevin Durant, Chappelle, um, OBJ. The list goes on and on. Uh, well, let's back up the truck here for a second. You just dropped Trump's name out of, like, in the middle of Mel Gibson. So Donald Trump's going to be at the event yeah. <laughs> this weekend. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, and, you... and, and, and a lot more, tons more celebrities. That's just off the top of my head. And then you start getting into, like, the rock stars of the business world and stuff, like Michael Dell and, you know, it, just tons of guys like that. Now, this is obviously a big deal for the UFC, but how big of a headache is this for you? How do you determine who sits where and how many different phone calls do you have to field on a daily basis to deal with the, these kind of circumstances? It's a great question, brother. I, I, it has been an absolute nightmare doing tickets. It's the worst part of this job. It's always been the worst part of this job, and, and uh, this, 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 this wasn't fun. You know, no matter it's like it's like your wedding every weekend. You're seating people, no matter where they're sitting, they're not happy, and that guy's in front of me. I should be in front of him. You know, all, all that kind of shit. Now your voice sounds a little bit hoarse. I don't know if that's from uh, you know having a rager in Maine last week, like you usually do during Fourth of <laughs> July week, or if it's from taking so many phone calls. Uh, <laughs> who bothered you the most last week when you you, you liked after a week off in Maine? Do you, do you disconnect, or do you, do you have to deal with all kinds of stuff while you're down there? No, yeah, no, I'm still taking calls and, and, and dealing with stuff, um, especially leading up to a week like this, but, but it's all good, yeah. UFC 229 reportedly had 2.4 million buys. I know you don't have the data yet. You're getting it later this week in terms of buys for this one, but if you had to guess over or under 2 million buys for this one, what do you think? Over. And the gate was roughly 17.2 million. I think that might be the T-Mobile Arena record uh, for, for UFC 229. Is this one over that number as well? This one's over 15. So it's between in the 15 to 17 range. So that would make it, I guess, number two all time. And yeah, you guys already hold the record. Right. All right. So let's uh, let's go back to the heavyweight division where we have next month in Houston. You've got Cyril Gaon taking on Derek Lewis. And I know this uh, was not necessarily the fight that you guys were hoping to make with Francis Ngannou being the heavyweight champion. A lot of people are concerned about how quickly an interim title was made. You guys I love this fight. That's oh, a fantastic <laughs> fight, for sure. I mean, it, it's two of the best heavyweights in the world, and there's, there's some bad blood with Cyril Gaon uh, having formerly trained with Francis Ngannou and, of course, Derek Lewis having beaten Francis Ngannou. But you guys signed a multi-event deal with uh, the city of Houston uh, and Tillman Fertitta. Was there something in that conversation where you, you guaranteed a heavyweight title fight or a Derek Lewis headline card that made August such a priority to have a heavyweight title fight? No, but, but I, I was planning on going there in August, so... Um, you know, it's not like there's a ton of places you can go right now. And I'm, I'm paying back the people who, you know, were there for us when we were ready to go. So, um, yeah, I, 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 I wanted to get that done. I think right now there are about 13 divisions that don't have title fights scheduled yet. I imagine there's going to be a bunch of announcements coming up soon. But why was heavyweight the one that you wanted to do in August? Uh, well, we were going to... Uh, we were going to Houston, and Derek Lewis is from Houston. Okay, so that was the priority, and, and that's why it was so important to have him on that card. Yeah, well, he was going to be on the card one way or another, regardless. So did this situation kind of send a message to the athletes in, in the UFC that, I mean, the train's going to leave the station. If you're, you're either on the train or you're off the train, this is the When, this is when what has we want that not been the message? That's always been the message. Yeah, you want to fight? You want to fight? I got fights every Saturday. You don't want to fight? No problem. I got fights every Saturday, so you can jump in whenever you're ready. When when do you think that uh, Francis will fight next then against the winner of this fight? Or do we have to see yeah, how, so, if there's so injuries? For, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see how this thing plays out. Francis will fight the winner of this, and then the winner of that fight will probably fight Stipe. So John Jones doesn't factor in really anytime soon? John Jones said he's sitting out till next year. When John Jones is ready to fight, John Jones can call me. Would you want John to take a, another fight in the heavyweight division that was not a title fight? 
that's up to him. Whatever he wants to do. I mean, the guy's been fighting his whole career. He, he's the goat. It's not, it's not like he's gonna learn anything else, taking another fight with somebody else. The guy's one of the best in the world. As long as he feels he's in shape and, and ready to go, he can fight whoever he wants. Uh, John's in his prime right now. Is it weird to not have him fight at this moment for you? Do you wish that he was fighting so we could see him in his prime performing? I, I don't. I don't think about any of that stuff. That's up to them. I put on fights. That's what I do. If you want to fight, I got fights. If you don't, I, 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 don't, I, I, I roll on. I focus on the guys who want to fight. Guys who don't want to fight, I don't even think about them. I don't even focus at all, not one bit, with what they're doing. You can be John Jones, Conor McGregor, or whoever. If you say, listen, I'm, I'm retired, or I'm not fighting, or I'm sitting out a year, I don't think about you ever until you're back on the roster. All right, so you're in the war room right now. I've been in there with you, and I'm, I was making direct eye contact the whole time. I felt like I was Charlie at Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory trying to give back the, ever, the uh, everlasting gobstoppers and, and solve the puzzle. Uh, I want you to do me a favor. Go to, like, the month of September and just take a random fight off the wall. Let's break some news here. It doesn't, doesn't need to be a main event. Just like a random bot. It could be the first fight on a card. Uh, I just I want to I utilize the war room while you're in there. The month of September? Sure. September, October, just, just an, any, any fight. co-main event but but what if a lot of these aren't done yet these are these are placeholders until we get them done do you have, do you know any offhand that are for sure done that you can you can throw at me no no none, none that are for sure done um co-main event in september i won't give you the date or whatever nick diaz versus robbie lawler all right, I'll take it. That was the fight I said when Nick Diaz came back. I said Robbie Lawler was the perfect opponent. It's a rematch from 12 years ago or whatever, something along those lines. That's the fight. I'm glad you guys made that one. We didn't make it yet. I'm glad it's in the works. I'll use my, the, journalism, uh, the journalism article that they always put out. This fight's in the works, so I'm glad that's in the works. There'll be 350 stories tomorrow about how that fight's done. Well, well, when I did I, that one for you. Okay? When I put, when I put it out, I don't out, like I, doing that shit. Get ready, <laughs> get ready for all the idiot websites out there talking about how I said this fight's done. I'll put in the works capitalized, all caps, because you gave that to me. Cool. <laughs> all right, I appreciate your time, Dana. Uh, enjoy this weekend. It's gonna be an amazing trilogy fight. Conor McGregor, Dustin Poirier, headlining this weekend's UFC 264 card. Thanks for your time. Thanks, buddy.